and there is a social cost. But the primary harm is to the user themselves. And therefore, it's, in our view, not a proper matter f for the state to undertake coercive action there. It's different in that sense from gun control. Guns kill other people. Drugs kill the user. That's the difference. Besides this uh, philosophical uh, defense of your position based on, on principle, what practical results do you think legalization would provide? Now, the other reason that we think it's the least bad policy is, is pragmatic, it's practical. Uh, we think that the prohibition of drugs has failed to uh, stop their use. It's failed even to diminish their use uh, much. Uh, and we think the central problem of, uh, uh, or posed by drugs is addiction. And that's a public health issue. I mean, drugs are really an issue of public health. They should never be an issue for law enforcement, let alone a war. And the question is, how can you achieve the most effective uh, education, public information, and treatment provision uh, to prevent and diminish uh, addiction? And we believe the root of uh, legalizing, regulating, and taxing drugs is the best way to do that. Let's deal with the economics here. If you legalize drugs, you remove organized crime from the business, and drugs then will become very cheap. Therefore, consumption should grow. Isn't that a bad result? Well, I think there are several, you've raised several points there. I mean, one is certainly one of the big advantages of legalization is that you you should be able to remove organized crime from this business. Um, secondly, uh, it's true that the price of drugs, while they're illegal, is all about risk rather than the cost of production. Uh, so if you legalize them, the price would come, come down. That's why we think you should tax them. And in setting the tax levels, there's a trade-off between setting the, the post-tax price high enough to, uh, uh, to try and uh, minimize consumption, but low enough to prevent a black market. Now, even so, clearly the price would be lower. Now, would that lead to a big increase in consumption? Not necessarily. A Agência de Combate às Drogas nos Estados Unidos rebate os argumentos usados pelos defensores da legalização. O uso de drogas ilegais no país caiu mais de um terço desde o fim da década de 70. E o número de usuários de cocaína diminuiu em 70% nos últimos 15 anos. O uso de maconha entre os jovens caiu 30% na última década. Alega que a legalização tornaria as drogas mais baratas e mais acessíveis. Cita o cálculo de que se a cocaína fosse legalizada, o número de usuários pularia de 2 milhões para 20 milhões de americanos. So there's a lot of frustration with the situation of the war on drugs uh, and people look at alternatives like uh, legalization. They look at prohibition, how it ended in the U.S. and uh, they say that it was a huge success, that alcohol became legal and uh, the problem of violence associated with it was solved. Uh, what do you think of that? In the cost of alcohol for the society is tremendous. I mean, just in terms of, of traffic deaths alone, we, we in the United States may be talking about 15,000 deaths a year. Uh, there's a tremendous connection between alcohol and violent crime, uh, alcohol and uh, family uh, abuse, alcohol and alcoholism and uh, uh, liver problems and so forth. So, I mean, alcohol... Uh, it, it is not some kind of enormous success story, and if only we could find some other drugs and, and deal with them as successfully as we have with alcohol, it, wouldn't it be a, a wonderful world? Now, it's possible that, that we wouldn't be able to adjust to a wide-open legalization of some of these other drugs as well as we have adjusted to alcohol, that it would even be worse. You know, millions of people in America are in trouble with alcohol um, and causing uh, automobile accidents, causing drownings, causing uh, fires. Uh, we have a great deal of social and, and medical 
morbidity in America because of alcohol. Further, the use of alcohol by adolescents uh, starting at you know, age 12 into the teen years is a very big problem in America, in high schools, in colleges. So we, we have a very, very big alcohol problem today. So the thought that we should now say, well, alcohol is legal, maybe that's the model to think about drugs, I would say no. There is new legislation being proposed in several states to almost legalize marijuana, to reduce uh, the penalties and uh, basically allow uh, users to get away with it. Um, what would be the impact of that from the point of view of treatment and prevention? Marijuana is the, uh, the trickiest drug because it appears uh, so benign. And 90% of the people who use marijuana can use it on some occasion and do not get caught, hooked, or addicted. On the other hand, if I look at the adolescents who come into Phoenix House and have to now live in Phoenix House for a period of time because their lives have become so disorganized, they've gotten into trouble with uh, gangs or uh, by breaking the law in, in other ways, by uh, shoplifting or stealing cars or uh, other, other crimes, have become truant uh, in school, uh, or their grades have really dropped away, have become alienated from their families and are living half in their home and half out of their home a very disorganized and socially disordered adolescent. Um, half the kids who come into Phoenix House, their primary drug of abuse is marijuana. So for this population, it's a very serious drug. And the thought that we would, you know, if, if people think of it in terms of their own children, rather than in terms of you know, an ideological position, it becomes much more easy to understand. You have looked into how this proposal for legalization of drugs would be implemented, the details, and uh, what have you